Hey, how you going? It's Mr. Bill here today, and today I'm doing a plug-in review on ReSonic by a company called Liebuk... I don't know how to say it. Um, basically, it's an audio player, kind of like VLC or um, <clears throat> or Win... whatever that one is that Windows makes, or FUBAR or something like that. Um, and basically, it's a, it's just like VLC on steroids, and I, and I love it, and I think it's way cooler than VLC, and I think you should totally use it. <clears throat> there's a free version, and then there's a paid version. This is the paid version. But the free version is also awesome, um, and you can also get a uh, trial version of the of the paid version if you want to mess around with it and check it out. So the f the first thing that it does that it's good for is it's just a nice audio player. So you can just play files. You can see the waveform if you click here. You can see uh, some form of spectrum, and if you click here it turns it into a different form of spectrum and then this one does sort of bars and kind of shows you the hertz here if you scroll over it so it's kind of nice if you like listening to music and you just want to quickly you know reference it on a spectrum um, so I like it for that reason uh, if you hit this button it plays them all sequentially so when this file stops it all keep playing it. Um, if you have this button selected, it'll stop playing after that file has uh, played. So when it reaches the end, it will stop. <coughs> uh, and you don't have to load any music into this, actually. You just kind of click through um, your files and it just reads the files out of your folders here. Uh, so that's cool, too. You don't have to load anything into it because that's one of the things that I didn't really like about something like, say, iTunes or whatever. You have to put it in a certain folder or whatever I believe. Uh, the second cool thing about it is it's a file converter. So if you click on this um, and you make a selection, let's just pretend uh, let's pretend this is a music file and not just a sound. Uh, if you click this little marker thing here, you can say export extraction, uh, sorry, extraction format and you can select whatever you want, 8-bit. Um, uh, so yeah, you can change the bit rate, you can change the sample rate, um, can change whether it's mono or stereo and then you can change the interpolation uh, so I just have it set to 24 bit 44 stereo um, but you can make it whatever and then you just click this little square down the bottom here and you can drag it anywhere on your computer including straight into your DAW so if we just grab this and just drag this straight into Ableton you can see it's just converted that file for us and put it in there or if we just you know say go to the desktop here uh, <coughs> we could just grab that little handle and I believe we should just be able to drag it straight to our desktop um, huh. apparently not maybe you can only do it once or something I don't know um, let's see let's try it with this one uh, so go to our desktop grab that little handle yeah you can just drag it out um, there's a few little bugs here and there but all overall I would still say it's better to use than VLC in my opinion I prefer it um, the developer just hit me up and, and showed me this, but actually I found out about this through Fine Cut Bodies a long time ago. And you know when somebody who's a computer programmer is using a program that is probably good. <clears throat> um, also, the developer was really nice and branded this player for me, which is super cool. Uh, so, yeah, that's possible, I guess. Um, but just be aware that it's still under development and if you want to know anything about it or whatever the developer is super nice There's also a Facebook group where you can go talk about it and there's forums and stuff like that um, So these are the two First like very basic things that this player does, but then it gets kind of really intense it, it becomes more like audio finder on Mac or like a sampler or something like that um, and, and what I really like this for and what I think I'll be using it a lot for is creating one shots out of sound design files that I make so my my style it uh, it's kind of developed a lot around making these um, these long files like this, where there's just tons of sounds that I make with like say a granulizer or just a multi-effect unit of some sort, and I just make tons of sounds. But then I have to go through Ableton and scrub through all those sounds. So let's say I take this sound here, put it in Ableton. I'll just have to scrub through and like find all the bits that I like and that's fine it's not too much of a problem to do it that way but one cool thing that you can do especially if you want to make sample packs is you can go through this file and you can hold down your alt key and you can just make markers
So I can just put markers anywhere. I would likely just put them on each shot, but it will take a minute, so I'm not going to do the whole thing. <clears throat> um, then if I want to play them back, I can click on this marker again, and I can say map temporary slices to letter keys, and then I can actually play these on my keyboard. And that's kind of cool. But what's really cool is if I click on this marker again, I can say ex extract temporary slices to new folder. So if I do that, and then we go back to our example sounds folder. You can see there's a new folder here. And what it's done is it's created a bunch of new sounds for us. So if we click on this, you can see it's turned them all into one shots for us. So now if we go to Ableton and we load these sounds in, um, which we could actually just do directly from ReSonic Player, I believe as well. Um, so we could actually just grab them straight from here and load them in that way. So now you can see we have them all uh, as one shots, except towards the end here, you can obviously see that the, the markers got a little bit uh, like I, I cared less about them towards the end because of the example here <coughs> and then that's just nice if you want to um, quickly create a drum rack or something like that and just put them in there uh, and also yes I'm aware that you could just take this and put it in a sampler um, so in Ableton actually you could just um, drop this in a sampler like this and then you know change your sensitivity and it does a similar thing with the markers and, and being able to play them back on different keys um, or you could just obviously right click and go uh what is it slice to, i think you have to warp it first and then you can right click and slice to new midi track i'm aware of these things uh but it's just a different different way of doing it uh and the fact that it does it all in an audio player uh is super cool uh so the other thing that i think is really cool apart from doing the one shots and just using it as a file converter and an audio player is you can kind of use it as a sound design tool too it has this record button on it so if we press play here on a file we could make a selection of a file and then we could play it and we could start looping it and then record that so uh if you watch this i can play it and mess with the record uh sorry mess with the playhead let me do it on a shorter file just so you can kind of see what's happening So it becomes kind of like a wavetable type thing. So if I hit record here, uh, so it hits stop record. You can see down the bottom it says recording ended. And when I hit record, it said recording started. Then if I come down the bottom here into the um, in the browser and hit recorded audio, you can see it has a recorded file. So I basically just created a, <coughs> a, new, uh, a new sample out of that. And then if I want, I can obviously go through and cut one shots out of that too. So it's kind of good as a sound design tool in that way, but also you can kind of do some live granulization stuff as well. So if we take this file, for instance, and just create a stack of markers, uh, and also to get rid of a marker, you just hit Alt and then click the marker again. Um, so what I can do now is uh, map slices to letter keys. And I can just sort of mash my keys and, and quickly go through here and play different parts of the file. I found it works good with like hi-hat or drum stuff. So maybe stuff like this. So if I go through and just mash my keys, then it becomes, I don't know, kind of like a weird multi-sampler thing. So if we record that, then hit record to end it. And then we go down to the browser. Um, you can see it's recorded a bunch of that stuff for us too, and we could save that file and then you know, re-cut it up if we wanted or do some wavetable stuff in here. For instance, like if we made a little selection, we could... Yeah, so it's kind of nice as a sound design tool too. <coughs> um, so I talked to the developer this morning and I asked him what he wants to do in the future with it. So he said in the future he wants to put a search function over here, uh, which I think is a really cool idea. <coughs> and he basically said he wants to put in this idea called black magic. So when you type in black magic into this search, uh, search bar, which isn't there right now, but will be, um, it'll find files that you've rarely used. So it'll find audio files that you didn't know you had perhaps. And I actually have a trick for this in Ableton. What I do is I hit Control F and I type freeze. 
and then what you get here is all of your freeze files so all of this stuff is stuff that you've you've frozen in sessions before and if you've been working on ableton for a long time like like i have then you just have basically an endless amount of sound design here to choose from so i don't even know what this stuff is just whatever just weird files that like i probably have never used that you know Yeah, just all sorts of crazy stuff that's been really processed and frozen over and over again. Um, so that's that's a trick that I like to do in Ableton. But he's gonna he's just gonna put it into the audio player itself. Uh, and then one more thing that he's gonna do is being able to preview wave files in any position just by clicking straight here in the browser. And he put a video of this on Facebook here um, in the Resonic group, which I'll put a link in the description of this video for, and you can go and join if you like. Basically, what you can do is you can see the waveform previews here and you can just click anywhere um, and trigger the waveform at any point. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you can see he's just clicking anywhere on the file and just kind of seeing where it's playing from. And you can also just drag there on the file too. <coughs> and the really nice thing about this, this program is it's fast. Like you can just click on it and just quickly click through files. Whereas in Ableton, to do similar stuff it just feels like this little browser here it just feels a little bit more clunky so although the ableton browser is really nice um it's just not as nice as this and although it kind of sucks to go between two programs there is certain things that you can do in resonic i believe that are nicer than doing in ableton and yeah if you want to check it out i'll put links in the description if you don't use a pc you can't use this program it's for pc only but if you use mac there's other options like audio finder and stuff like that and he said the developer said he may uh create a mac version but he doesn't want to make a shitty mac version he wants to make a really good pc version first and then he'll make a, a mac version that's as good as the pc version uh so anyway yeah resonic player uh check the links in the description let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And I'm sure the, the developer is really nice and he's really community based. So actually he will likely be able to answer some questions um, in the comments here too. So yeah, feel free to, to um, ask questions and whatnot and hope you enjoy the player and hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Have a good day.